Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us uh, this month for our speaker series. And I'm Roberta McIntyre, President and CEO of FireSafe Sonoma, uh, your host today. And actually, this month, we're doing something fun. We're dark in December, so we won't have a speaker series program next month, uh, giving everybody a break from us through the Thanksgiving and Christmas holiday and New Year's, etc. cetera. Um, and so what we thought would be fun to do this um, last month of the series of this year is to pull together a couple of the founding members of FireSafe Sonoma and kind of have a more or less, well, not more or less, quite frankly, an informal chat uh, about the early days of FireSafe Sonoma, how it got started, what the inspiration was, you know, maybe talk a little bit about the, the early stumbles and challenges. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so Carly on and Vern were here pretty, you know, from basically day one. And then I didn't come into the scene until about 2009 when the county fire chief kind of said, hey, you got to you got to jump on this fire safe Sonoma thing when I was the county fire marshal. So with that, I think what I'll do is turn it over to you, Vern. Vern Losh is one of, I think, the two founding members of Fire Safe Sonoma. I think it was you and Jack Rosevear, uh, Vern. So um, I'm going to hand it off to you, Vern, to kind of kick us off here and then pull Carly on in, you know, uh, and then we'll go from there. And don't forget to undo the uh, microphone thingy. Mute. Yeah, I hear you, Vern. You got to do turn on your mic. Oh, I was muted. I thought I, I moved my screen over and I didn't see that. No worries. This is oh, I'm, I'm, I'm live now. Okay. So um, as Roberta said, I'm, I'm Vern Losh. I used to be the uh, uh, Sonoma County Director of Emergency Services and Fire Chief. And um, back in 95, I was hired as the um, Fire Marshal Deputy Chief in Sonoma County. But the origins uh, in my mind that uh, started uh, or helped to create Fire Safe Sonoma began probably quite a few years before that. <clears throat> it involved uh, several events and many people. Um, so I'll, I'll run through this quickly because it was, it was amazing as I was going through this, um, thinking about what to say about the origins of Fire Safe Sonoma, how um, involved a lot of different things were to get to the point where we actually started uh, talking about Fire Safe Sonoma and then actually creating it and doing the nonprofit process and everything. <clears throat> but um, my thought process, you know, goes back to 1987 when the San Mateo County Fire Chiefs started talking about a, some kind of a committee to, to address the loss of life and property in the wildland fires. And then about 1988, I was working in Placer County and I was introduced to a man named Bruce Turbyville. And uh, Dave Shoe's on here, and he knows him really well, I'm sure. Um, but uh, Bruce was involved at the headquarters of CAL FIRE, you know, the California Department of Forestry and Fire Protection at that time. And there was an organization called the Sacramento Valley Prevention Officers that uh, Bruce started attending. And then I met up with uh, him and uh, a guy named Larry Marshburn that retired out of uh, Orange County, actually where uh, Bruce Turbyville, I believe, started uh, in his CAL FIRE career. And we were on the public safety education committees uh, with Sac Valley. And then we started talking a lot about the wildland threat way back then. Um, we had, uh, on my notes here, I put that Larry Bruce and I had several informal discussions about wildland fire safety in California for many years. In fact, uh, Larry Marshburn owned a, a Mexican restaurant and a lot of those discussions were held over nachos and adult beverages. But, uh, <clears throat> Moving on, in 1991, we had the Oakland Hills fire in California. Uh, it was a, you know, certainly a wildland urban interface fire that killed 25 people, uh, destroyed over 2,800 homes and many more apartments. And it was only 1,500 acres. A lot of people don't realize that, that uh, Oakland Hills was only 1,500 acres and it, you know, quite dense, of course, because it is the city of Oakland. Um, about the same time, those San Mateo County fire chiefs actually started the first um, fire safe council in San, in San Mateo County. And then around that same time also, um, 
after the Oakland Hills fire, there's a supervisor in Marin County, Hal Brown, introduced a resolution to create a fire safe council in Marin County. And then along that time and along with that resolution, Jack Rosevere was involved as the fire marshal in Marin County. And um, he was tasked with helping create um, fire safe Marin. Um, and of course, Jack went to San Mateo County to see what they were doing. And then the Marin County um, Municipal Water District also started a fire prevention organization. Marin County Water um, has a tremendous amount of land in, in open space land in Marin County. And a lot of that land was burning up. And of course it's watershed and, and things like that. And then in uh, 92, Jack and the supervisor's work kind of merged with Marin County Water District's work and they created Fire Safe Marin. Um, that leads to when Bruce started the actual, um, found, uh, laid the foundation for uh, the Fire Safe, California Fire Safe Council in 93. Um, in 95, I came to Sonoma County as the Deputy Chief Fire Marshal. Um, and several more events continued to happen. In October of 95, the Vision Fire Marin County occurred and it burned over 12,000 acres. And then right after the Vision Fire um, is when I really hit the idea of, we need to do something here in Sonoma County before we start having uh, you know, a lot of events that uh, can impact lives and property. Um, so I contacted Jack and uh, I'd never met Jack before, uh, before this. So I contacted Jack and got all the information that he had on the formation of, of uh, in Marin County. And then in mid-December of 95, we actually had our first kind of pretty much informal meeting over at the old Permit Resource Management Department in Sonoma County um, of FireSafe Sonoma. Now the name FireSafe Sonoma is different than FireSafe Marin. I wanted to kind of have a little bit uh, you know, and then it's different than the, excuse me, it's different than the Fire Safe Council because I wanted to have a little bit, my thought was to have a little bit different name to because we're, we were Sonoma County and we were different than everybody else. But anyway, that's another side story. Um, we continued to hold regular meetings in 96, um, trying to invite as many people as possible to get involved. Those The people that we invited were trying to get a cross section of Sonoma County um, certainly, the fire service was was well uh, participated. Well, we were looking for insurance providers, power companies, you know, elected officials, anybody that we could come up with, um, you know, to join our organization and to join, uh, you know, our efforts in in fire safety. Um, we became a nonprofit officially in '98, um, and then in late November of '98, Jack Rosenberg actually came to work for Sonoma County as the deputy chief fire marshal. And I was elevated to the fire chief and director of, of the same organization. Um, and soon after Jack's arrival, I was able to step down as chair of Fire Safe Sonoma. And Jack took over as, as chair of the organization. We really basically headquartered it out of our offices, you know, with our billing address uh, being that of Sonoma County Department of Fire and Emergency Services. Um, probably one of the first um, very critical things for us was recognition. So one of the first things that we went out after was, you know, getting some support from the Board of Supervisors. And then in October of 99, um, we actually, the supervisors passed a resolution in support and recognition of Fire Safe Sonoma in Sonoma County. Um, after that recognition, we continued to evolve continue to try to get more and more people involved, uh, trying to also still focus on, you know, getting a cross section of the people involved in, um, you know, across the county that had an interest in fire safety and life safety from wildland fires. And, um, and then I retired <laughs> in 2008. And, um, uh, but then there's a whole lot of stuff that happened between 99 and 2008. And I think that there's probably some other people on this, uh, this zoom in this zoom informational meeting that uh, can jump in and fill some of those things in too. Now that's kind of where it started where I came up with the ideas and it was really other people's 
again, it was other people's um, input, involvement, and events that happened in California, particularly around where I was, that uh, um, you know helped me come up with the idea of planting the seed to you know get a fire safe organization in Sonoma County. Uh, particularly after I spent a week at the Oakland Hills fire um, with a strike team of fire engines and uh, and all that stuff. But anyway, I'll I'll shut up now and let uh, somebody I, else jump in. I do want to share that when you retired out from the county as the county fire warden, fire chief, um, you got off the board of Fire Safe Sonoma. And then a little while later, um, as I recall, we kind of recruited you back on. So now you're a board member again. Yes, that's true. That is true. I think I had what, two years off? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then when in, did Car Yeah, I uh, left in eight and you left, you came on in nine, right? Yeah, I came in in between 2008 and 2009. Yeah. I, I came, got hired on as the county fire marshal after uh, Chief Rosevear left. Yeah. I, was, I came on when you were still the chief. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was, um, yeah, because you left, I was the interim chief for a little while, and then we brought on Chief. That's right. Yeah. And so, yeah, when Chief Aston got hired, he learned of Fire Safe Sonoma, and he said, hey, there's this Fire Safe Sonoma thing, you know, I need you to be involved in that. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I, I got plenty to do without that. And he's like, no, 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 you have to be involved in that, you know. So I I jumped on in, started going to the meetings, et cetera. And then over time, you know, uh, you know, things evolved. But before I, to keep this chronologically, I want to have Carly on kind of jump in and tell us about your role, Carly on, before, you know, I share out about how I became involved because I didn't come involved till, you know, like we say, between eight and nine. And Carly on, you were like one of the early, you know, folks, you weren't a board member, but you were doing all the work of Fire Safe Sonoma back in the day. You want to actually? I I was a board member. In fact, I was board president for a time. I didn't know that. Very yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so I got into this world like Dave is going to resonate with this. Dave Shu. Um, I had a real life as a you know a historian and an archaeologist. That's what I was working on on the side, and I started volunteering for my local volunteer fire department. And as was Dave's experience, he was an architect. We both had pretty cool jobs, but we both got bit with the fire bug and sort of n never looked back. And slowly but surely, my side volunteer gig turned into a career which has had more legs than anything else I've ever done. And... Um, the connection with the county, I just want to clarify this because this is sort of an important thing to understand about Fire Safe Sonoma is, you know, when Vern and Jack got this up and running, they were doing that as part of their role in fire prevention at the county of Sonoma. So in those early years, there was a really strong tie between Fire Safe Sonoma and Sonoma County Fire and Emergency Services. And how I came into the picture was that... Um, Another person who I want to acknowledge with tremendous respect was Pete Martin. And Pete Martin was a guy who worked for the county doing vegetation management stuff. And Pete um, figured out that the what was not yet the California Fire Safe Council, but was soon to become the Fire Safe Council, um, had some money to throw around for people to do vegetation management on roadsides. And so Pete wrote this thing up and said, hey, all you people out there in volunteer fire company land, would you like to get some money to do road clearing? And I said, yeah, yeah, sign me up. Never knowing um, that that was going to completely change my life. So we got this $5,000 grant, treated an ungodly number of roads, largely with volunteer labor and nobody could spell environmental compliance back then. So, you know, we, we just did it. And uh, I wrote reports and sent reports back to the county and the county came up with this job to do outreach and education. And they said, hey, you know, that Fort Ross girl, she did a really good job on those reports. Let's see if she wants to 
apply for that job doing outreach and education. And it was mostly targeted at kids and elders, and it was a great project. And so I applied for it and got that job and started working for the county of Sonoma. Within, I don't know, a week, I had Vern and Jack and Pete yanking me into fire safe Sonoma <laughs> as well, <laughs> because it was really obvious that I, my interest has always been pretty much exclusively in wildland fire. I was trained in structure fire, but it was always like, ew, that structure stuff, it's so icky. I love wildland stuff and always did. And so they recognized that in me. And so they dragged me into fire safe Sonoma. Um, at the same time, I'm starting to go out and learn more and um, heavily influenced by people like Jack Cohen and Steve Quarles. You mean buildings have something to do with this? And um, so started bringing a lot of that back into the group and uh, thinking about um, how we're doing things. And um, then I started writing grants and um, that kind of really changed the focus of Fire Safe Sonoma at that point, once someone who was in there who could write grants and do things. And um, between 2007 and 2016, um, Fire Safe Sonoma got about almost $800,000 worth of grants, which today I won't get out of bed for $800,000. But when you think about the time in which that happened, um, the most important thing to realize about those early years of Fire Safe Sonoma is that we were in a county where there was very little understanding of the degree of risk that we were facing. And um, both on the agencies, but especially on residents, people, this was a strange idea to them. 2003, 2007, Southern California, we saw what was coming, but we weren't really making the, oh, that's Southern California. They burned down there. Oh, Lake County, they burned too, but we're good here because we're different. We also have no federal land and most of the grants at that time were focused on protecting federal lands from fires that start elsewhere. And uh, so it, it was hard to get money. So that I got $700,000 flowing into the county to do uh, the first chipper program which was kind of exciting. The first, no, make that the second chipper grant. Jack Rosevere was responsible for the first one when he got us the chipper, which Fire Safe Sonoma owned for a while. Um, but then we wrote a grant to do chipper programs throughout the county. We ended up getting two of those. We did multiple grants to address the devastation of sudden oak death on roadsides and around homes. Uh, we did a bunch of outreach and education stuff. And, um, you know, basically I was sort of pulling a living together by running these grants and pulling a little from here, a little from there, working for the county some of the time. And Fire Safe Sonoma slowly built um, throughout that period until Roberta came along and then it did another big leap. So there was a big leap when it formed. There was a big leap when we started doing more stuff. And then there was the third leap when it really started doing everything that it's doing now, which is sort of um, on Roberta's side. So, thanks, Carleon. Um, so, Vern, from your perspective, how much is that, how things have changed? Because I remember I, I, I found some stuff in the hard copy archives that I have, um, you know, and I noticed that it looks like in the early days, you guys got some funding from state fund to do some stuff. You guys had like an, it looks like maybe an initial kickoff fundraiser, big event. Uh, can you kind of tell me about, you know, the contrast between those early days and, and, you know, your point of view of where we are today? Well, in the, you know, in the beginning, we were just trying to get as much as we still are today, publicity and recognition as we could. Um, we did have an event out at, uh, I believe it was Landmark, Landmark, Landmark Winery um, in the early years. Uh, it was pretty well attended. And um, I don't know that we made, you know, a lot of money for the nonprofit, but uh, uh, we did get the word out, particularly in Sonoma Valley. Um, we had several people from Cal Fire and Ronnie Coleman was there. Um, 
I can't remember if Ronnie was state fire marshal at the time or not, um, but uh, he was there to provide some recognition. Um, but I think that um, be because you know you always hate to say this, but be but because there was no significant events or very few, you know, in Sonoma County, it was it was a tough sell, you know, to to get the word out and try to you know get people to you know, read our documents and read our publications. And, um, you know, I have to, uh, it was mentioned in the chat that uh, Pete Martin, I mentioned, was uh, is on the board still for uh, Fire Safe Marin. But Pete was one of the original people that worked really hard with uh, with Jack in the formation of uh, Fire Safe Marin. And uh, we were fortunate that when he uh, kind of semi-retired from Marin County Fire, that he came up to our office in Sonoma County and did a lot of vegetation management work, as uh, Carly on said. But uh, yeah, the early years are very similar in a lot of ways to the current years. Um, now we unfortunately have had a, a tremendous amount of fires in Sonoma County. And uh, I say we, I live in Utah now, but uh, I was there for, for most of those large events. But, um, you know, it's just, it's a struggle to get, you know, get the word out all the time and to get people to listen. Uh, and again, unfortunately, because of the large events we've had in Sonoma County, uh, I guess the good thing is people are listening now. And there's a lot of organizations out there that are trying to do the best they can to get the word out. I know Priscilla's on the call. Her A lot of the COPE organizations are out there strong. I'm not sure if any of the other names are involved closely with COPE or not, but I, I see Priscilla there. Um, there's, you know, there, there's a lot of organizations out there trying to do good and get the word out. And and I believe people are listening today. Carly on you, you wrote most of the grant applications back in the day when, you know, I used the term before Wild and Fire Safety and Risk Reduction was popular. Um, and you kind of are my, you know, you're my mentor in this space. You know, I kind of picked up where you left off, you know, keeping Fire Safe Sonoma going. But in those early days, it had to have been really hard to find funding for the various things that, you know, some of us, I want to say many, but I don't know if I can, but at least some of us felt needed to happen in the county to, you know, to, to help with wildland fire safety. Can you share some of those experiences trying to find some of that money to get project work done? It was, it was rough. There, there wasn't much statewide. I mean, it's, it seems, you know, I look back on, you know, pre and post 2017, it's a completely different planet. And there are a million state programs of it. There's money all over the place now. Um, if you went back to, you know, 2005, there was almost nothing. Cal Fire wasn't doing anything. The California Fire Safe Council, once they got up and running, um, you know, they would have funding that varied over time. Like one year, they had like a giant pot of money, million bucks or something for the state. And the next minute, you know, the next month, either the next year, their funding would get cut and they would have a very small pot of money. And when you were sitting in a county where there had been no significant fire history in a state where there was significant fire history, it was pretty hard to make a competitive uh, grant application. So we were really grateful for what we got. And really, the California Fire Safe Council was what got us up and running. It was the funding from that source was our primary almost exclusive source of funding, either through their direct granting or stuff they would get through Bureau of Land Man Management. We got a lot because we have some nexus with BLM properties. Um, but back in those days, it was, re it was really, really tough. And uh, it was especially hard because people um, uh, on all sides of the equation, uh, it was it's it's hard to justify th throwing a bunch of grant money at a place that doesn't seem to catch on fire and we all knew it was gonna we knew the day was coming it was clear um but it, 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 it's really hard to write a competitive 
you know, application when you're like going, well, yeah, we lost, some, yeah, 20, yeah, yeah, 78. We lost 56 houses when you're looking at the Cedar Fire. Right. Well, we, you know, it was it was it was pretty tough in those early days. And um, but there were a lot of folks out there in the community, some of whom I see here today, who did get it and who were concerned. And so that helped a lot. So, you know, we couldn't have done this. Um, did we not have those folks out in the communities who were chiming in and getting aware and starting to ask questions and doing things and so much changed, like the Community Wildfire Protection Plan, the uh, definition of that plan was in the 2003 Healthy Forest Restoration Act. So between 2003 and I think it was 2008 or so when we applied for funding to write one, nobody still knew what they were, what they were supposed to do. I remember when I was working on the first draft and I, I called up someone who should have known and said, what does this risk assessment mean? What do you what do you want for that? And well, I don't know. Well, who do I ask? I don't know. It was like nobody was in charge and nobody knew what these things were supposed to look like even. And so now that's a whole another kettle of fish. And um a, a very so a lot has changed in California in general. Um, as well as, I, you know, the difference in Sonoma County, it's it's not even the same place. We should have just renamed it after 17. Rename what? The... Rename the whole county because it's like a whole nother place, oh. right? You know, and um, what people are concerned about and um, our understanding of uh, the risk that we all face in this county has completely changed the entire environment of the world that I work in, in welfare, because we wouldn't have had these people at this meeting. Yeah. We wouldn't have done this meeting. Oh, I know. I know. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, the board meetings back in the day were like, it was the board members would show up and me, and that was about it. There was very little interest really in what Farsay Sonoma was up to. And it was really hard to get legs under it. And no funding available for staffing. So we're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul to keep things moving forward. It was um, it was a really, really different world. And I'm enormously gratified to see the strides that have been made. I'm sorry that what brought it on was such trauma and loss that we've suffered in this county. But I am really glad that we're on the other side of the hump of understanding and that people really get it now. Now we just have to get everybody to do it. Don't just think about it. Do it. And yeah. There's still a lot of challenges in that world. But Speaking of challenges, what can you kind of toss out or, you know, top of mind toss out? your biggest challenge in your term with Fire Safe Sonoma and maybe contrast that with what you feel like is one of your biggest successes? Um, I have to say that um, most of the work that I did for Fire Safe Sonoma was done as a volunteer. And that was tough because I needed to make a living. And um, so a lack of complete lack of funding for staffing was a, was a huge problem. And the Fire Safe Council started recognizing that and trying to get funding for it. And it took a long time um, because you can, you know, pay for a lot of stuff with a grant, but you can't pay for regular staff. So who's writing those grants? Who's doing those outreach um, events into communities who need them but are not part of a grant? And, you know, a, a lot of that I did on my own. And that was, that was a challenge and I was able to do it, but, um, but we, we got there in the end. So that was hard. Um, getting people working? on board and getting people to do stuff. There was a long time when it was sort of like, I did everything. <laughs> that was, um, that was a little challenging, right? Is anybody else in this organization going to do anything? Okay. I'll just keep going. Yeah. So, you know, that was challenging for a while. So, you know, there's always challenges in doing stuff, but where there's a, a righteous cause and a passion, things move forward. And that is exactly what happened in this organization is that it did keep moving forward 
And it kept moving forward well enough that it, we could launch to the level that you're at now, which is a whole nother thing than what Vern started, than what I started. It's now getting where we all wanted it to go. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Vern, how about you? How about a, a challenge that you remember that was really tough and then, you know, a success to contrast it? You know, I, I, I think a lot of it is very similar to what Carleon said is that, uh, you know, trying to get recognition, trying to get, get people to understand the importance of wildland fire safety in Sonoma County when you just don't ha have any significant recent history of large events. Um, we, you know, I, I would, I would, you know, similar frustration um, that, that Curtion showed is, you know, banging my head against the wall, trying to get the attention that I thought we needed. Of course, I was partial, you know, because, <laughs> you know, I knew it was important, um, you know, and I just couldn't get, I couldn't get to people to, you know, understand that we needed funding for staff. We needed funding for the organization. We needed funding to pr print publications, you know, and things like that. And it was really, really a struggle, you know, um, you know, you don't want to wish tragedy, <laughs> but, um, you know, people would look me straight in the face and say, well, it's, it's never burnt yet. It hasn't burnt, you know, and forever. And, um, you know, even within the County, I was going to, uh, people that uh, had large control of large masses of land, like parks and open space and saying that, uh, you know, you, we need, we need your help, uh, you know, in, in doing this message, getting this message out and same thing, you know, well, well we've never had a fire. There's no reason for, for fire safety, right. you know, and now you talk to parks and you talk to open space since 2017. It's like, that's high, high, high on their list of priorities. And they're put, throwing a ton of money at it, which is fantastic. But it's, um, you know, it's, and then you talk to the planning and building departments back then. And, you know, we shouldn't be building homes in these areas. Well, you know, nah, yeah, nothing's ever burned. <laughs> and now, you know, what, 5,000 homes in the last six years? Anyway, it was a lot of frustration and trying to get funding and trying to get the word out. And trying to get the recognition that we that we uh, really thought we we needed to have. Yeah, so <clears throat> and you know there were there were other challenges inherent in Sonoma County. One of which is when I walked into Fire World in the early two thousands, there were forty one completely separate fire agencies in the county. And so, getting all of the fire community on board for anything was enormously difficult. And the other thing that is really important about that widespread fire is that nobody had enough money to, you know, hire somebody to deal with wildland fire or even think about it because everybody is just dealing with their small budgets. And that is, I think we've shrunk to almost 20 now, which is a, a huge improvement in making stuff happen. But the uh, the way fire was structured, the fire world was structured in Sonoma County, um, really was one of the other things that made this whole thing challenging. Yeah. So I want to share now when I came on the scene and what that kind of looked like. So uh, I got involved about 2000, 2008, and really started to learn from Carly on about how important this wildland fire issue was. And she kind of tuned me up a few times and uh, we worked together on some projects and grants, et cetera. And then uh, in 2015, when I was getting ready to retire from the county, uh, our board was actually down to three members myself and two other board members, and Carly Ann was still a volunteer executive coordinator. And um, I'm looking at the board and I'm looking at the bylaws and I'm thinking, you know, I can't leave Fire Save Sonoma just yet because we have to have at least three board members. So I'll retire from the county, you know, and then I'll stay on the board until we could recruit one more member. And I think we'll Carly on, I think that was right about the time we were talking about trying to bring Marshall on board. 
Um, and so I'm ready to leave both the county and Fire Sage Sonoma. And I was living at Santa Rosa at the time as the fire marshal. I had an apartment in Santa Rosa so I could be close to work and be on call, et cetera. But I also had a house that I built in Hidden Valley in Lake County. And my plan was to retire from the county, move back into my house in, in Lake County, and who knows what. I almost got a job with Home Depot, but Carleon did an intervention and talked me out of that. Um, and so anyway, so I'm making plans to retire. My apartment is all packed up. And then guess what happened? The Valley Fire happened. So about the time I thought I was going to move back into my house in Hidden Valley Lake, I couldn't because I was evacuated. And I actually had to ask my landlord, the, the apartment manager, I go, hey, can I, I know I put in my notice already. I need a couple more weeks because I'm evacuated for at least two more weeks. Can I have an extension? And she said, yes, and, you know, yeah, we'll extend your agreement for two more weeks. So I didn't know if I had a house to go back to or whatever. So then, of course, everything got crazy after that, started seeing more fires. I stayed on with Fire Safe Sonoma. We brought on more board members. And between then and now, we now have nine board members, um, a very strong, healthy board. And I felt obligated to stay uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, with that uh, evolution, I'm going to hand it off to you, Harry, because I think you have some questions that, that you want to toss to all three of us. I do um, have some questions for you. I'm sorry, Marika, you take it away first. No, no worries. We are, Harry and I are going to tag team some questions to you, Rebecca. Um, so you're not off the hook just yet. Um, so you uh, did not leave Fire Safe Sonoma, but you were also at the point in your career where you were ready to retire. So you retired and then joined Fire Safe Sonoma as the CEO and president of the board. Um, and so we wanted to ask you, how's retirement going? Um, <laughs> it's been bumpy. <laughs> Are you really retired? Um. I, I think so. I mean, I do this out of the love for it. You know, it is very fulfilling. You know, Retired and working like, full time, right? Yeah, it's almost a full time job for me. I probably I work between 32 and 40 hours a week. Um, you know, even though I try to take Fridays off, we end up doing events on weekends and, you know, we go to things in the evening. Like this past Monday, I was in an event Monday night and um, yeah, so on and so forth. And I think last week I was at two evening events. We did one with the insurance company out in Safer West. And then we did another one with the Lower Russian River MAC, Municipal Advisory Council, which was an evening presentation as well. So um, yeah, we're, yeah, I'm still doing it. Right. Be so Depot though, I right? Just, I, I'm in therapy once a month though too. <laughs> So it sounds like um, some things at Fire Safe Sonoma never change. It sounds like Carolyn volunteered a lot of time, Ben has volunteered a lot of time, and you today even still are volunteering a lot of time. But um, so some things may not have changed too much. But in your time at Fire Safe Sonoma, what do you think has been um, one of the biggest changes that you've observed? observed? The ability to access funding for projects has changed immensely. I remember Carly on struggles and I shared in some of her struggles when we worked on grant applications together where she did all the work and I'm like, good, thank you. You're doing a great job. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I learned a lot from her in terms of, you know, how to write a good grant, et cetera. Um, and so I think, I think it's easier to get access to funding now. For example, about not quite, a little over a year ago, one of the big things that that helped Fire Safe Sonoma was the California Council had, um, you know, they they opened up an opportunity for funding for a county coordinator, and so we applied for that uh, opportunity, got funded. I think it was one hundred seventy five thousand, and that gave us the ability to bring Marika on board. 
um, as our first, you know, paid staff person. And, you know, where I thought that would lighten my load um, <laughs> with the stuff that Marika got us involved with and engaged with and inspired to do, it just increased our, you know, level of resources that we can offer to folks. It increased our footprint, it increased our visibility within the county and so on and so forth. So, you know, with Marika's help, we really were able to improve our existence as the Countywide Fire Safe Council for Sonoma County. So mm -hmm. yeah, that that's kind of the biggest plus. And, you know, the thing that, that I do find that's, um, hugely different now from the early days is our access to funding. And also, you know, the the degree that people are more aware of the, you know, risk of wildland fire. I mean, I remember watching Carly on do presentations where she's telling people, you guys really need to do this defensible space stuff, you know, and, you know, every once in a while, you imagine somebody might do that. But now, you know, people know the stuff you know, more than they used to, you know, still we're out there doing it because we still won't have people to reach, but yeah. So that, that's kind of, you know, my thoughts there. All righty. So one question from Rebecca and I is when you were little, Roberta, is, did you see yourself doing something like this or was this more of something that just kind of came to you? Okay. Did you imagine so dedicating your life to this? I have been dedicating my life to fire safety since probably the third or fourth, maybe the fifth grade. Um, our elementary school had this contest where the fire marshal for Covina, the city I lived in down in Southern California, they put on a contest and they wanted to see who could come up with the best fire safety thing. So um, I was in a group with a couple other students and they wanted to make this model building and burn it down. And I'm thinking, well, that's not really, I don't know if that's really the intent here. So I peeled off from that group. And what I ended up doing singularly is I made a homemade fire extinguisher. Um, and it consisted of a mason jar uh, filled with vinegar and a little like tea bag assembly hanging from the lid of baking soda. And um, it had a hole in the top where I put a straw and put some uh, Play-Doh around it to seal it up. And the concept is when you tip it over, kind of like the old fire extinguishers where you had to tip them over, when you tipped it over, the baking soda mixed with the vinegar and, you know, expanded and squirted out the straw. <laughs> and so at the public assembly where I showed everybody that, you know, thing, uh, you know, the fire marshal was there and he loved it. He's like, wow, that's great. You won first prize for the contest. So that, that was my first um, experience with something like that. And I think, Vern, I don't remember when I applied for the fire inspector job for the city of Santa Rosa. I don't remember if I shared that story with you guys or not. I think I did uh, when you guys- I think I, you know, as you started talking, I think I do remember that now, yes. Yeah, but that was that was it. You know, I, I knew I wanted to do fire safety, you know, since I was like, you know, knee high to a grasshopper. Well, that is awesome, Robert. I actually, I didn't even know that story. So that's so nice. Thank you for sharing. And I would also like to toss this question to Vern and Carleon. I imagine I know Vern's answer, though. How do you, how, what is my answer? <laughs> I, I would imagine yes. <laughs> this is exactly what you saw yourself doing. I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm yeah, there's a uh, there's a great story online that uh, when I retired that. Uh, the local press Democrat wrote. And one of the things I told him was that uh, when I was a kid, my mom used to throw us all on a panel van and we chased fire trucks. And uh, so that's kind of how it started. And then um, during that, probably during that same time, I actually turned some friends in for lighting a wildland fire and uh, went down to the local fire station and, and turned them in. And uh, I actually, years later, I worked for the guy that I turned them into. 
and uh, he became a deputy chief in Sacramento County. And uh, uh, anyway, when I was up there before I came to Sonoma County, but uh, it was kind of ironic that I ended up actually uh, spending some time working for that guy. But that's kind of where my stuff started was when I was a kid. Wow, I didn't, awesome. yeah, I didn't build a fire extinguisher, but I reported arsonists. <laughs> Not all of us can be as smart as Roberta, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my um, bachelor's degree in French linguistics and my master's in archaeology perhaps would not indicate a future in wildfire. Um, so, no, I came into it as a volunteer. And once I started learning about wildland fire, what married up was m my desire to help fix our environment Really, first, I came into it as a uh, with an environmental focus, right? And thinking, oh, fire, bad. And so that, of course, is not the way I see it at all anymore. Um, but I, what I really liked about it was the marriage of um, environmental with fun stuff that you get to do with hoses. And, um, and it, it I just, I got the bug. Dave could explain that as well as me, right? Because um, we were both had a, com a completely different idea and suddenly went, wow, this is the coolest thing ever. And I really never stopped pushing that forward. So, but no, I didn't make a fire extinguisher in the third grade. Oh, I didn't either. So that's okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, we have we have one more question for the three of you, and then we'd love to open it up for questions um, from our audience, if there are any. I know that there's been a couple in the chat, but just um, if you could just think and just give a, a one minute answer, each one of you, um, your hopes for the future of Fire Safe Sonoma. Roberta, do you want to kick it, kick it off? Sure. So um, we're evolving, we're growing. And we will continue to be, you know, the hub for other uh, community organizations throughout the county, whether they're code groups or map your neighborhoods or HOAs or local fire safe councils or firewise communities. We're really pushing the firewise community uh, concept currently. And so, um, yeah, so that's kind of um, where I think we're headed. We have, you know, I feel like with the grants we have in play right now uh, for the indirect funds that go with those, uh, between that and some other things we've got working in the background, I feel like we have sustainable funding for the next um, five years. Uh, to keep myself going as long as I have the energy and also to keep one or two people staffed. Um, we're actually getting ready to recruit for a, a part-time flex time admin or actually exec community coordinators, the jobs back. Um, and so basically we need, we're looking for somebody to take over Marika's role and they, where she, that she filled initially. And Marika's gonna switch over and focus pretty much on Firewise exclusively. Um, and so, um, and she's gonna cut her hours back. So we'll be flyering a, a job spec for, for that role within the next week or so. So if you know anyone who's interested, um, we'd love to hear them, hear from them and have them apply. So you should see the announcement by Tuesday next week, hit, hit your inbox for those that are um, receiving our updates. So um, yeah, so I, th I see us growing. I don't see us shrinking um, overall. And I see us uh, in the future continuing to work with the America program and bringing on Climate Corps fellows or Grizzly Corps fellows or Civic Spark fellows whatever uh, opportunity arises we've we've had a huge success with with those fellows uh three one two three years ago we brought on kaylin notch as a 
a civic corps fellow and she did a wonderful job for us and then after that we had a a grizzly corps fellow mason uh, for a couple of years and mason just left you know within the last few weeks and then currently we're blessed with having uh, harry hubble and rebecca fisher on board as our climate core fellows. So that's helped us a lot. It helps it helped us grow. Um, huge benefit to us, you know, and whatever benefits us benefits the county as a whole because we're the countywide fire safe council. We're, you know, inclusive. Um, you know, don't care what you're doing or what you call yourself. If you're interested in well then fire safety and risk reduction, we are here to help you. Uh, that's our fundamental mission. If you need help with getting a grant off the ground or a project developed or need a fiscal sponsor, that's what we're here to do. And, and we're we're not going to shrink that scope. We're only going to expand it. We've got a couple ideas in terms of how we're wanting to grow in the future and increase our bandwidth. Um, I don't feel like we have anything that we're ready to share publicly in terms of that, but but we are working on building out our organization to be even more helpful than we are. Awesome. Thanks, Roberta. We'll go Carly on and then Vern with that same question. Um, so you, I sort of like to answer this from the perspective of where I am now, which is working for the county administering 67 million dollars worth of mitigation grants for wildland stuff that include outreach education and actual on the ground work. And, um, you know, walking into those when we wrote the first of those, I was like, I'm going to offer them rebates and they're going to line up and, and I'm going to have to beat them off with sticks. And um, what we've realized is that that's not the case at all. What we need is um, voices within the community to help us push these messages out. And that is Fire Safe Sonoma's role more than anybody else's. So speaking strictly as someone who's trying to do the right thing from an agency perspective, I need Fire Safe Sonoma to be highly functional to help us when we get projects like the ones we have going, help us implement those, help us reach out to the communities. Um, I would love it if the Fire Safe Council at Fire Safe Sonoma got a lot more involved with updating and entering projects into the Community Wildfire Protection Plan, which sits at the county because that's where I was when I wrote the grant to rewrite the 2016 plan. But it's a Community Wildfire Protection Plan. And so I would like Fire Safe Sonoma to have a really significant role in what happens with that as time rolls on. So keeping Fire Safe Sonoma's in important position to be a liaison between all agencies and the community is absolutely critical. Thanks, Carly Ann. Over to you, Ben. You know, there's been a lot said, um, you, you know, about, about where we're headed. Um, I, I think I, I just have to echo what, what both Roberta and, and Carly Ann said is that, uh, you know, we certainly want to be involved. We want to stay involved. We want to serve the entire uh, county of Sonoma, all the population. Um, I think that uh, I was going to bring this up, but Carly Ann mentioned it, the CWPP or the Community, community Wildfire Protection Plan. We wouldn't have one without Carly Ann. I have to I have to throw that out there, too. And then also another thing that Carly Ann worked on also was when Sudden Oak Death uh, showed its ugly face around the state of California, particularly Sonoma County, that uh, Carly Ann jumped on that too. She's done so many things for this organization and continues to do things for this organization that uh, um, I have to give uh, credit where credit is definitely due. But um, we just need to keep evolving um, with all the community organizations and, and, all, and the population of Sonoma County. And even though I live in Utah, I'm still connected to Sonoma County. And I'm back there all the time, and uh, and um, I still I still love being involved. And uh, when we get enough enough crazy people that want to join this board, I'm happy to step aside anytime. So anybody listening that wants to get on this board and push me out, go right ahead, go for uh -huh. it. <laughs> 
And I yes. really appreciate I really appreciate the time that uh, people took out of their lives today too to to come join us. And uh, I'm I'm thankful that I was able to uh, jump into and make a few comments. I I think Vern, you're in our your and my loyalties are very similar. I live in Lake County, and there's a woman who lives across the street from me. She's uh, connected to the Lake County Fire Safe Council board and. Uh, she tried to recruit me a couple times, and I'm like, "No, I, I'm I'm Sonoma County inclined." <laughs> well, thank you all so much for your time, um, sharing this history. I think Ben, when I first met you, I was saying I was thinking, "We really need you on. We really need to share this story." I can't believe we don't have it on there already. So, I'm happy that we'll be able to post this on our. YouTube channel for everybody to see. And we've captured this history of Fire Safe Sonoma so well today. So thank you all for what you've shared. Um, we wanted to open it up for- Marika, Marika, how did I describe the Fire Safe Sonoma board to you and the community that it served oh. in the early days? <laughs> Uh, well, in my interview, Ben, it was my first interview and I came on board not even knowing what a fire safe council was or that they even existed. Um, so I had a very de uh, deer in headlights interview with you and Ken and um, Ken Height, our treasurer. And you said, I need you to Google this video, Cowboys Chasing Cats. Hurting Cats. Herding cats. Thank you. Cowboys herding <laughs> cats. And I was like, this is the strangest request that anyone has ever asked me to do in an interview. But of course I did. And it was, if nobody knows this advertisement, cowboys running across the desert, galloping on their horses with hundreds, millions of cats running this way and that. And you just said, we couldn't really put this in the job description, but this is pretty much what it is, it sums it up better than we can. So <laughs> you gave me fair warning. <laughs> so that was pretty accurate, wasn't it? <laughs> pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. I like to think that we've straightened things out a little bit. There's a little bit more organization. <laughs> we've put in some um structure and we continue to share that structure as best we can. Um I think the cats just all had kittens. <laughs> <laughs> They've slowed uh, down now. They've slowed down. Well, uh, I have kittens. <laughs> yes. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, I wonder, do we have any um, questions from our audience today? Anybody have any burning questions for uh, the founders and the leaders of Fire Safe Sonoma? I see that we're a little over three, um, four minutes past. We did get oh, started a little late. We start a little late, so we'll still have a one hour, you know, recording, yeah. which is good. Um, but I, I do want to share that, um, you know, one of the back when, you know, Fire Safe Sonoma was headquartered at the county, you know, Department of Fire and Emergency Services offices, um, a lot of people, uh, you know, they they ended up with the perception that Fire Safe Sonoma was a county entity, and it never was a county entity. It was never meant to be. It was always uh, an NGO, an independent, private nonprofit. And, um, you, you know, when I was the fire marshal retiring, one of the admin folks who used to take care of the admin stuff for Fire Safe Sonoma, uh, she brought a couple of big boxes to my office. To, oh yeah, you got to take these too. This is all the Fire Safe Sonoma stuff. Uh, so I took all the hard copies of stuff, and you know now it's all in my office here at home. But even today, you know, some people still uh, we run into people from time to time who still think that Fire Safe Sonoma is an arm of county government, and we're not. We are an independent organization. Um, not connected to the county. We work with the county a lot. You know, we work a lot with uh, public infrastructure. We work a lot with open space. We work a lot with, you know, uh, Permit Sonoma. And we work a lot with the county CAO's office. But even though we, we have those connections and a little bit of influence there, uh, we are not a county entity. 
uh, we're we're not from the government and we're here to help you. <laughs> Any questions popping in? There was one from Moira. I hope you saw my answer to that about um, starting a, yeah, a community group. Um, we're really helping communities become firewise communities instead of lo local fire safe councils. We can chat more about that offline. Um, you but, can visit yeah. our website too and look at the map and see who's out there too. We've got a pretty good map on our website that has, if not all, pretty much almost all of the uh, community groups, the local community groups in Sonoma County that are working on doing well then fire safety and risk reduction stuff. And if I can jump in there really quick with one, um, I, I saw your comment and um, I, one thing that I would absolutely like to say is that first the organized group, then the grant. Yes. Don't try to mix those two together. You really need your organized group because any grants you're trying to implement, you're going to need that organizational structure in order to make that grant go. So as much as we all want to get out and do something today, I and this is bitter experience talking, um, you don't want to get that process yeah, there's, reversed. There's actually a couple steps in between there I'm going to toss in there. So form your group, do your local risk assessment. Firewise has one built in. Uh, that risk assessment will indicate what you need to work on. Take a look at what you need to work on. Develop projects to mitigate your identified risk and then go get grants. You develop know. them and then enter them into the community welfare yes. protection yeah, plan absolutely. project entry portal just saying <laughs> yeah yeah we've been getting really good about pointing people there as well i was in a meeting yesterday talking about a project and i'm like well they need to know they got to enter this in the the portal you know before we'll probably even start looking at it it's got to be in the system um so yeah, Priscilla, I see, Priscilla, you've entered in COPE as a way to yes. organize your community. It's a fantastic way. It's a very strong organization in the north of our county. Um, but yes, thank you for putting it in there. Go visit that website. It's another great way to get organized. Um, and I think one of those steps is to develop a risk assessment, which then goes hand in hand with your firewise recognition. So um they can all work together. They don't need to be competing. Um, so we, like Roberta said, love to support you any which way we can and find the way that works best for your community. So, all right. Well, I don't see any more questions in the chat. Um, and I think we're at time. I think we're, yeah, we're good. So you guys, thank you all for, you know, joining us in this last speaker series of 2023. And I thanks for your time today. And thanks, Vernon Carleon, for your time today. Thank you. Us Thank you to everybody. Yeah, taking a look at the past. And Harry and Marika, of course, thanks for all your help with Fire Safe Sonoma. And I wish you all a good Thanksgiving, a wonderful Christmas holiday, and a happy new year. And you will see us uh, again in January with our kick off uh, 2024 speaker series when we when we get that out there. So thank you everyone for all your work, all your time and everything you do.